Hello, my name is Nicole with So Much More. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating how to make scallop placemats using the pattern by Poor House Quilt Designs. I'll be using a wonderful line of designer fabric called Night of the Nutcracker by Paintbrush Studio Fabrics. These fabrics feature playful mustaches, contemporary holiday foliage, including holly leaves and berries, and of course, the majestic Nutcracker himself. These placemats have unique scallop shape, which may appear to intimidate people. I don't know why, but sewing curves can be a little bit scary. Not to worry, because the Bozal double-sided fusible pre-cuts make this project a snap. You can find this pattern and all your supplies in my online shop, which I've linked below in the description of this video. This project is especially great for creating unique and custom placemats for your home. These are perfect for the upcoming holidays and even for every day. Let's get started and you'll see just how easy it is to make these scalloped placemats. Fabric requirements and cutting measurements are listed within your scalloped placemats pattern. Once you've gathered your supplies, you'll take your accent pieces over to the ironing board. The accent pieces are the skinny strips. Fold these pieces lengthwise, wrong sides together. I like to pre-treat mine with a spray starch and I've linked my favorite starch below. Once you have all of your accent pieces starched, folded, and ironed, you'll pin the accents to the border pieces. Pin all of these in place and then take these units over to your sewing machine. Sew these pieces together using a one quarter inch seam allowance. And I just love my quarter inch seam presser foot for jobs just like this. Back over at the wool pressing mat, Press the seam allowance towards the border strip, extending the accent beyond the border edge. And now for the mitered corners. So we're going to want to lay this out in the proper orientation with all the accent flange towards the middle. Place one border unit on top of the other right sides together. You're going to add a pin to keep these from slipping around. Now if you're not comfortable with miters, let me show you how easy they are to be done. I'm using a 4.5 by 8.5 inch ruler, and you'll see the 45 degree angle marking. It's a great size ruler for that. Place the 45 degree line along the raw edge of the stacked border piece, and then take your friction pin and mark the angle. You may find you need to be really specific with your measurements when making mitered corners. So go ahead and take your time lining up your fabrics and making your mark. I do like to pin this generously so when I take it to the sewing machine, the project materials don't slip in between my workspace and underneath my machine and the sewing needle. Once you have these both marked and pinned, you'll sew these in place. You'll notice I don't have my quarter inch presser foot anymore. I have a regular presser foot. And you'll also notice that I did some back stitching there, especially on the folded part. You're going to want to make sure you do that back stitching to ensure the folded corner stitching stays intact. That corner looks really nice.
we're going to sew the other corner exactly the same as the first. Now before we cut away any of the excess fabric, we're going to double check to make sure that we like how the miters turned out. If you don't like how it looks, then you have to seam rip and try again. Once you're happy with how they turned out, you're going to give yourself a quarter inch seam allowance from the seam that you just sewn and trim away the excess fabric. I use my ruler edge and my rotary cutter to do this and this handy little cutting mat. You're going to do this to both corners. And now we're going to add the last border piece to our existing unit in the very same fashion we did the first two corners. Remember to take your time so that you don't have to spend any of it redoing anything. Once you have everything aligned, marked, and pinned in place, go ahead back to the sewing machine to secure those corners into place. And don't forget to do your back stitching or your back tacking. And trim away that excess fabric from the last two corners and then we're ready for the next step. Press your seams for each mitered corner. Press them open. I like to use spray starch to get them nice and flat. Now we're going to be working on the back of the placemat. Pin the border strip set right sides together to the backing fabric. I align my corners first and then start pinning towards the middle. Stitch around the entire perimeter using a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll notice that I switch back my quarter inch seam presser foot as it's ideal for this step. Now we're going to be working on the front part of the placemat. You'll take your exterior front fabric wrong side up and attach the double sided foam fusible scalloped placemat onto it and then grab your Teflon sheet. You'll definitely want to invest in a Teflon sheet. This is something that you'll want to have in your sewing room and it's rather inexpensive. It comes in handy for a multiple, multiple uses. Um, so take your time ironing. You're going to be using your Teflon sheet so that it doesn't, the other side of the fusible doesn't stick to your ironing board or anything else. Once you have your front exterior fabric fused to your placemat, you'll take some sharp pointy scissors and trim away the excess fabric. Follow the edge of the foam scallops and trim away the excess fabric. It's nice to have a good pair of scissors for this. A nice sharp point helps as well. Okay, now you're going to take the, you're going to center the wrong side of the backing unit on the unfused side of your placemat. Your foam placemat should be facing right side up and you're going to clip all around the exterior of the placemat. Using your clover clips is a really good time to do that right here. You're going to flip the placemat over, take your project to the pressing mat, and fuse from the right side of the back. Now 
Now using your zipper foot, this is where I'm changing out to a zipper foot here, because you're gonna wanna get right up next to the edge of the foam scallop placemat. You're going to sew right along the edge of this foam scallop placemat. You're gonna sew around the entire perimeter, all of the scallops. Now when you come to a corner, you're gonna come up to a corner, you're gonna make sure that your needle is in the down position. Once it's in the down position, you're gonna lift up your zipper foot, pivot your project, and then put your zipper foot back down and continue sewing along the scallops. Once you have everything sewn, you can trim away the excess fabric. I recommend trimming about an eighth of an inch away from the scallop seam. You're gonna to wanna to get close enough to where you don't have an excess of bulk when you flip this, but you don't wanna to get too close where the seam will fall apart in the, in the wash. Remember, these are placemats and you'll be washing these so you don't take your cuts any less than an eighth of an inch. And once you have everything trimmed, take your sharp snips and clip the corners. Then take your fray check and drop fray check into each of those snipped crevices. Now it's time to flip the project. This is where the magic is happening. Flip the corners first and then continue flipping the rest of the placemat. Now I love using the point to point turner. It helps get all of the curves all the way turned out. You'll notice there's a pointy end to the turner. This is useful for other things, but not this project. You're going to want to use this turner to get all of the curves out. You can give it a nice press if you need to. And now we're going to do some top stitching. I changed the presser foot to the regular presser foot and I also changed my thread color to match my fabric. And I changed my stitch length to three. Um, you'll also see that I've changed my thread color for top stitching the border edge as well. Once you get all of this top stitching done, you're finished. This is such a fun and easy project to do. They make great gifts. They're perfect for creating your own custom decor for the holidays and any day as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you sign up for notifications, you'll be the first to know about my next video. If you want more DIY, go to the link in the description and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Each week, I send you inspiration directly to your inbox. For more tutorials, head over to my website and Facebook group, where there is always so much more in store.